appreciate every one of you uh, for coming in. Those are online. Thank you guys. God bless. If you have your mic with you and it's still on, please would you turn it off for me, please? If you have your mic, especially if you have you are already ministering before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Noah and Divine, would you kindly please sit here so that we don't have the pillars blocking you? Would you sit in the front? Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, once again, thank you, everybody, for you know, coming to the service today and everyone online. God bless you. Thank you. If you are, for those are that are also watching me for the first time, God bless you, guys. Um, let's pray and then we'll share the little that God will help us to share. Our Father, I want to thank you for the privilege of life, for the gift of life. We thank you for the opportunity to see the first Sunday in the month of November. Ten months have come and gone in this terrible year 2020. Thank you for preserving our lives. We give you all the glory. Holy Spirit, we pray that you speak to us, speak to our heart, open the hearts of our spirit and our minds, open the hearts of our spirit and our mind, let your war bring life, illumination, revelation, encounter, in the name of Jesus to every one of us. Speak your word, Holy Spirit, breathe over your word, we remove the seal over this word, Every spirit of buying and selling, every spirit of misunderstanding, confusion, we bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we cast you out. Holy Spirit, we pray, we pray take total control and preeminence. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning on the topics that says, God is not a man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've read from book of Numbers 23, 1 to 24, so I will not have the time, especially the testimony has taken like almost like 12, 13 minutes of my time, so I will not have the time to go over, you know, verse, verse by verse of the scripture that we read. But the topic is God is not a man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not appreciate this testimony they were giving. You may not, because you are probably not being an accident or a near. The Bible says there is only one step between death and life. And sometimes it's just one second. One, in fact, a split of second. And it just happened. Like the one that Sister Yotuin shared that just someone had only one child. The lady was 31. And then she, was, she got in an accident and she didn't make it. it. What could be worse than that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing. If you are a parent, you, if you are not a parent, you may not understand. If you are a parent, God forbid, you will never bury your child. When you have an experience of a child dying, you will understand. But I don't, I, 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 and my prayer is none of you will, will ever experience that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God is not a man. Um, let's read um, Numbers 23. Can someone help us with um, Prince, I do not know the volume of this. You may want to reduce the one bit so that I don't have echo from here. All right, praise the Lord. All right, can somebody help us with numbers? Please understand that we are having problem with you are okay now. Are you okay now? Okay. You might not, you might not worry to take it with that for now. Numbers 23, can someone help us with uh, verse 19? Can someone help us read verse 19? Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Mm -hmm. God is not a man mm -hmm. that he should lie, mm -hmm. nor a son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. Has he said, and, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Okay. God is not a man. That's where we got that, uh, that caption from. God is not a man that he should lie, 
or a son of man that he should change his mind. Now, you might say, what about, see, hold on. God changed his mind every, uh, many times in the Bible. He actually wasn't changing his mind. What happened was that when God said somebody was going to die because they sinned, and then they repented, what happened is that the justice side of God was provoked when the person sinned. When the person repented, then the mercy side of God was provoked or was released. That's just it. It didn't actually have anything to do with God. Praise the Lord. But he has set all these principles down. Let's go to the next page. But before we mention, you know, mention that, I, I need to give you the background story. Balak was a king and he wanted to curse Israel as a nation because he felt that they were threats to him. They were coming close to his land and if they don't you know, if they were not destroyed, they will take over his territory. So he, he, you know, he hired a prophet called Balaam to come and curse these God's people. Now, before Balaam left, God already told him not to go because he sent people to him. Balaam still went and prayed the second time. God said, okay, go. Then he went on that journey. You remember that journey as he was going, his donkey was talking to him. And he still went on the journey. So Balak, Balak set up seven altars with lambs offering on them. He stood by that. Then Balak said, let me go and pray and hear what God will say. Whatever he says to me, that I will come and say, I will cause these people for you. When he went to talk to God, God said, you can't cause those people. Those are my people, the children of Israel. Today, God's people are every born again child of God. Nobody can place a curse on you. Because the Bible, the Bible says, a curse costless shall not come. Unless you actually did something to deserve that curse. But if somebody just stood up and said, hey, you are cursed. You can just laugh it off and go to sleep. Because it will not work. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Unless you did something to deserve that. Okay? Now, did you notice three times they set up those altars to cost God's people? In fact, they were changing direction. They were changing locations. But God didn't listen to them. This man, this king that doesn't know God was saying, what has God said? You know, it's, un it's unfortunate that uh, there are many people, even in the church today, that are not, they are Christian, that are not Christian, that only what they want to do is to use God. They don't serve God, they use God. They think God is like a phone that you can carry at any time and use him and then you tell him what to do, like a machine, an idol. But the God that we serve, the God of heaven, you can't control him. He controls you. You can't tell him what to do. Many people use God coming to church. All they think is that when, they come, when I come to church, well, God is going to you know, do this for me. Let me give an example. When some people give, give offerings, and they say, well, Lord, I give $10 on, Mon on Sunday. Monday, I need a car. It doesn't work like that. Would your $10 even in this world buy you a car? So why do you think God is a magician? That you give him $10 on Sunday and on Monday, he just suddenly provides a car for you. The Bible says when the sky be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. When you keep giving, when you keep investing in God, then God one day will open the book of remembrance and bless you with that which that you are trusting God for. Let's look at some attributes of man compared with God. One, man is limited in all his ways and areas. God is unlimited. How many of us agree with that? Is God limited? No. Man is limited. God is not. Okay. Number two, man is a mother being. Every man at best will die one day. We grow old. Our God does not grow old. Okay. First Timothy chapter one verse seventeen. What did he say? Now unto the King eternal, a mother. Invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. The Bible calls him the only. Talk to me, guys. Only what? Wise. Then what happened to every other God? They are fools. That's the meaning. There's only one wise God, and that's the God of heaven and now the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God Almighty. The every other God is fool. All right. Let's see. 
No, 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 we are not here. I'm not even finished with that. I am right. Is the clicker working? I think maybe I'm going to do that myself. Now you went back to the stop. I don't think this is working. All right. Number three. Man has a beginning and oh, man has a beginning and no end. But God has none. Is that understood? Man has a beginning and no end. Do you agree with me? How? Every soul of man and spirit is immortal. It's forever. You will live forever, whether in heaven or in hell. You have a beginning, but you don't have an end. God does not have a beginning, and he does not have an end. Amen. That's different between. Every woman being has a beginning, but we don't have an end. Just so you know, there will be no end to any woman being. You can only exist here for 50 years, 100 years, 150 years. When you leave this world, you will be alive in another world, and that is going to be forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man is born by time. Since it's a boundary, God is not. Let me tell you one thing. Man is bound by times and seasons. And you know, we are now in fall. Winter is coming in. God does not walk with time. He doesn't live in the realm of time. God lives in, oh, in one plane. Listen everyone. In one plane. It's called eternity. Now, because God wanted to create human beings on earth, he cut out a little bit of eternity and give it to us and say, that's time. Now, there's eternity past, eternity future. In the midst of that, where we are now is what we call, you have time. This is the reason why Somebody asked a question in Bible study like two weeks ago. They said, okay, why would somebody stay in the world and because they didn't accept Jesus, they live for only maybe 200 years maximum. That's all you can live. And then you die. Why would you go to hell forever? You know the answer? One of the very powerful answers is that. In the other side, there is no time. Everything is now and it's forever. That's the problem. Because you now move to the realm of God where the time does not exist. As far as God is concerned, He's punishing you in hell now. And that now does not change forever. <laughs> That's the challenge. God lives in the now. But that now is forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is omnipotent. Man is not. God is everywhere. Omnip man is not. God is omniscient. He knows everything. Everything that needs to be known, not just everything that may be some knowledge. There are things that human beings and science have not discovered. God already knows. He knows everything about anything that needs to be known and that will ever be known. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. Okay, I read to you. Please take a, pay attention. I'm pleading with you to pay attention at this point. This is one of the most powerful scriptures that we read today. I need somebody to help us with Isaiah 40. Verse 10 to 18. Isaiah 40, verse 10 to 18. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his hand shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Yes. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his hand, and carry them in his bosom, and he shall gently lead those that are with young. Next. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands? And meted out the heaven with the span. This is God that will tell you the length and the breadth of heaven. No science will tell you that. And comprehend the dust of the earth in measure. Go and give me one scientist that knows exactly the number of dust on the earth. He has not been born and he will never be born. But God will tell you the exact number. And weigh the mountains on scale. Did you see the, the best we are talking about? In waste mountain on scale. There is no human being that can tell you the weight of any mountain because you can't even remove it. But he knows. He planted them there. I told you that I'm having an echo here. And 
heals imbalances. Heals. He weighs them in balances and okay, this, this. All right, next. Verse 13. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or being his counsel. Or being his counselor has taught him. You can't teach the spirit of God nothing. You can't direct him. He's God Almighty. Next. With whom took he counsel? Who does God consult for counsel? And say, hey, give me advice. And who instructed him and taught him in his own path of judgment? And taught him knowledge. And show it to him a way of understanding. You can't teach him knowledge. You can't teach him understanding. He is all in all. All knowledge and understanding resides in him. Next. He was supposed to be 18. Okay, 15 is the next one. Are you sure? You can't, I can't, I couldn't have written 14 and then 15 next. Is that what? 11 to Okay, that's what we read. So where are we now? We are in 15. We are in 15. Okay. Behold, the nations are as a drop of in a bucket. It didn't say, please pay attention. It didn't say, behold, a nation. It said the nations of the world. We have about 160 to 170 nations of the world. They are like a drop of water in a bucket in front of God. Now, Imagine then billions of people that are inside the nations. You don't understand the, the vastness, the big, the greatness of the God that we're talking about in the one that made the heaven and now. Let me tell you one thing. Have you ever traveled to any country and there is no sky? That you went to a nation and said, hey, there's no sky in this country. No. This person stretched this sky all over the world without a pillar. And he knows the exact length. Woman being cannot tell you. All right. Behold, the nations are like a drop in the bucket and counted as small dust of balance. Behold, it taketh up the eyes as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. That is a nation, it's not sufficient to burn in his hand. Okay? Now the beast there are sufficient to burn for offering. All nations before him, he still say all nations, not one. All nations before him, I ask what? As nothing, it can't be. As, it can't be more. That is the second time he's saying that the spirit of God. It can't be more, um, more clear than that. All nation, not one nation. He's not talking about the United States. He's talking about all nations of the world as nothing, and they are look the worst, and they are counted to him less than nothing, minus zero. <laughs> it's not just zero. He said they are counted to him minus less than nothing. Okay, and then it is. To whom will you liken God? To whom will you liken God? Of what likeness will you compare him? Yes. I will, if if you're having issues with that, let me let people read to me because I, I have a short time. And... Eighteen. Okay. Are you sure we were in eighteen? Okay. Because it was appearing fifteen in my eyes. You said. Is it teen? Yes, sir. Why am I seeing 15? <laughs> okay. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'm getting older. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's read verse 21 to 23. I want to make sure you read it. This, one, this is one of the best chapters of the Bible that describes God. You need to really mark that chapter in your, in your Bible. I always read it. Yes? 20 to 23. 21 to 23, sorry. Haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? Don't you understand? Don't you understand? Are you deaf to the words of God? Are you deaf to the words of God? The words he gave before the world began. The words he gave before the world began. Are you so ignorant? Are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. God sits above the circles of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers. The people below seem like grasshoppers. He spreads so, out so. the heavens like He stretches out the heavens like a cotton. Like a cotton. And makes his tent from them. Uh-huh. He judges the great people of the world uh -huh. and brings them all to nothing. All to nothing. Okay, last ones. Let's read the last verses there. I have not done yet. Wait. You have to go back, please. Go back, go back, please, to the slide. To the slide. Please, guys, leave the slide. Don't take it anymore. 25 to 31. 
I need somebody to help us. Leave this light there. Don't take it away. To whom then would uh -huh. you compare me? To whom then would you compare me? That I will be his equal, say uh -huh. the only one. Uh -huh. Lift up your eyes on high. Uh -huh. And see who has created these heavenly bodies. Uh -huh. The one who brings out their host by number. Mm -hmm. He calls them all by name. He calls all the stars. Even they have name. He has code for them. He has no, you don't even know the number of stars th that there is. Uh -huh. Because of the greatness of his might uh -huh. and the strength of his power, uh -huh. not one is missing. Not one is missing. Yes? Why, O Jacob, do you say and declare, O Israel, mm. my way is hidden from the Lord? Why do you think, guys, that God does not know what you are doing? Why do you think God does not see what you're doing? See, my ways are hidden from God. That's the height of foolishness. This person knows your thoughts even before it comes into your mind. You can't hide anywhere. And then you are secure from God. I have never seen a man that could hide from God, whether you went under the ground. Or whether it's in the dark, this person can, he sees everything plain clear. There's no darkness with him. God does not operate in the realm of night. I told you he sits down and everything is now and it's eternity. He does not have night and day. Everything is clear before him. Yes? My way is hidden from the Lord and go, the justice due. Go to the next verse. Do you not know? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Have you not heard? The everlasting God. That the everlasting God that we talk about. The Lord, the creator of the earth. The Lord, the creator of the hands of the earth. Does the, not become tired or grow weary. It does not become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. You can never search. It's okay. Let's stop there. It does not. And an, an Amplified Bible says, it does not run and stop to catch his breath. If I ask you to run from here to Pittsburgh, after you run for like 30 minutes, you are going to stop. And, God does not stop to catch his breath. He just continues to run from now till eternity. You don't know who you are dealing with. If you say God should run now, you just continue to run for eternity and it will never stop. He can never be tired. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 11, 33 says, how unsearchable is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Next, I just pray our baby to run over what I have here. Why is it that God cannot lie? One by one, God is removed from human nature. Far removed from human nature. Meaning God is not, he has no limitation. I mentioned before, no weakness, no need. He's the almighty, he's also sufficient God. He does not need anything to exist. President Trump, I watch... Uh, his, uh, his daughter's uh, advert um, 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 ad three days ago asking people to vote for President Trump for the second time. President Trump is going to ask you for your vote. God does not need yours. You can't vote him out of power. You can't remove him. You cannot terminate his appointment. You can have ex-president. Even after the second time, if President Trump wins, after the second time, he will go, right? Yeah. You will have ex-president Trump, ex-CEO, as this and that, you cannot have ex Almighty God. You can't replace him. He's irreplaceable. He's irremovable. He does not need your permission to exist. In fact, he existed before you start existing. All right. Number two, our God does not have anyone greater than him and who he fears, so he cannot lie. One of the reasons why people lie is because they are afraid. Okay, uh, Sister Esther, if you see me this, I will let me say, because I don't want Sister Esther. To so know, so she lies to his like, Oh no, no, this is what I'm doing. God does not have anybody that's greater than him, so he cannot lie. Number three, he is ever faithful and he cannot deny himself. Second Timothy chapter two verse thirteen says, "He is ever faithful, even when we are not faithful, he cannot deny himself." Okay, number four, lies are part of sinful nature. People started lying because they got that sinful nature from Adam. Adam was not created to lie. God does not have sinful nature in him, so how can he lie? Number five. God cannot lie because that is contrary to his nature. The day God lies, is this is to be God because Satan will say, hey, now you have told a lie, you are no longer God that in charge. God cannot lie. It's not possible. Okay? What, number six, our God is the embodiment of truth. The Bible calls him the truth, the way, the life, and the truth. It's not a truth. He is the truth. 
not in truth. He is the truth, the only one. Okay? Number seven. Whatever God says come to pass. Pay attention to this. God cannot lie because anything he says will come to be, into being, even if he does not exist before. That's very powerful. When God says something, one of the reasons why he cannot lie, let me give you an example of what I'm saying there. What is the color of this thing? Right. If the Lord, if you say, Lord, if the Lord say, hey, for I come here, and you are coming, and if the Lord say, oh, what is the color of hey, for I say red? The Lord said, no, it's purple. Before he says purple, that thing turns to purple. That is the God that we're talking. Everyone says, ah, Lord, boy, was right. Say, no, I said it's purple. Whatever he says is what it will be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Genesis 1 3, God said, Let there. You read it wrongly. You need to read the, the Septuagint version, the real Bible version of that. God didn't say, Let there be light. He said, Light be. He didn't say, Let there be light. Like he's asking for permission. He said, Light be. And that's it. It just be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's flip this. Let me ask you a question. God can do all things. Is that true? Yes. Is it true? Yes. If what? God cannot lie. God can do all things. God can do all things and God cannot do all things. Both statements are true. God can do all things by ability. He cannot do all things by principle. God cannot lie by principle. He can do everything by ability, but he cannot do everything by principle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have to understand that. God cannot lie. That's one thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God cannot justify the wicked. No. You cannot bribe God. Did you see the king, uh, what's the name of the, the Bala king wanted to bribe God. He set up this, set, put, in fact, Balaam told God, I have set up seven Altars and kill seven rams. What, what does that mean to God? The Bible says all the animals in the world is not enough for him to, to eat if he wants to, if he's hungry. First, if I were hungry, would I tell you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want to take you to something. As we begin to round up because of our time. Let somebody help us. If you want to put it on the screen, it's fine, but you have to be very quick to return back to the slide that I want. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 18. Please, guys, pay attention to this. Hebrew 13, ah, sorry, Hebrew 6, verse 13 to 18. For when God made pr promise to Abraham, notice what God did. What did he make to Abraham? Oh, the first one. What? Promise. Because he could not swear by no greater. He couldn't swear by anybody greater. He swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Next. Next. For men verily swear by the greater. And note for confirmation. Let me go to verse 17. Wherein God is willing no more abundantly to show unto heirs of his promise the immutability of his cancer, meaning unchangeable nature of this world, whatever it spoke, it speaks. Confirm it by what? And of. That by, where that's where we go, but by true, unchangeable, immutable things with God, in which it was impossible for God to lie. He might be, she might show, it, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled to lay hold on the hope set before us, those of us that have come to Christ. God has given us two immutable things that it's impossible for him to lie. Let me tell you, there are actually three. In that place that we read, number one, promise. Number two, covenant. Number three, oath. If you are talking of promise, God can change his promise concerning you. The reason is that every promise of God, even in the Bible, is predicated on your actions. Amen. It will tell you if you bring your tithe, this is what's going to happen, right? You will have your part to play. That is on promise. When it comes to the level of covenant, it, it is more powerful. And you will discover that God took Abraham through that. He first gave him a promise. Leave your father's house and whatever. Then he moved him to covenant. 
then he swore and no to him that in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. You cannot curse him. It's not possible. Even God himself cannot reverse the blessing. It's too late. Brethren, when God wants to, when God wants to make the best out of your life, if he, if he gives you a promise, it's good enough. When he changes it to covenant, oh my God. Brethren, the Bible says it does not break his, my covenant will I not break. He said, I will not lie to the son of David. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said, if the co my covenant with his son and death can be broken, so my covenant with David can be broken. That there will be no day and night. And it's not possible. And that is even less than a oath when God swore by himself and said, if I don't do this, let me die. Let me stop to be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My prayer is that God will move us from the realm of promise to covenant and oaths Amen. in our walk with him in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Okay, as I wind up, let's flip. I just wrote here, God cannot lie about what he has said or what he has promised in his word. Brethren, God cannot lie about what he has said and promised in his word. You better take God's word very seriously. Number two, God cannot lie um, about what he has promised you. God cannot lie about heaven and hell. God told us there is heaven. God told us there is hell. Brethren, it does not matter what anybody is telling you. God cannot lie about what he has said. God is not a man that should lie or a son of man that he should repent. Number three, God cannot lie or fall by, because of judgment. He said judgment is going to come. Number five, God said there will be reward to all men. As you serve God, God's going to reward you whether you like it or not. If you like, do the word of, work of God with levity. And do it any how you want. You will get a reward. Bible say, we will be rewarded. Amen. 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 The word of God let us know that God will reward every single act that we did for him and for his kingdom. If you like, take God's word seriously. If you like, don't take it seriously. If you like, don't take God's, God's word seriously. You will find that that is true. All right. Now, I read this and we close. Titus chapter, Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Pay attention to this scripture. It will bless you. Titus 1 2. In hope, guys, pay attention. In hope of eternal life, which God, can which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Before this version say before the world began, and that version say before time began. It means the God I told you God was the system before time. He just caught out of eternity and give us a time. There is eternity past and there is eternity future. Between them is called time. God does not live in the realm of time. In the hope of eternal life. With God that cannot lie promise. God promised that eternal life will come through Jesus Christ. Before time began. Before man came. Brethren, that eternal life has been offered when Jesus Christ gave his life to, for all humanity. So if you have not become born again, you will need to give your heart to Jesus to experience that hope of that promise of eternal life. Remember, I say, with God that cannot lie, promise before time began. That is the first, very first thing you need to do to get into relationship with God. Receive eternal life into your spirit by accepting Jesus as the Lord of your life and recognizing that you are a sinner. And the hope of eternal life, with God that cannot lie, promise before the world began. God is not a man that should lie. Or a son of man that should repent. He said there is a, eternal life is going to be possible through Christ Jesus. And you better take him serious. No matter who is lying unto you. Around the whole world. God does not lie. Praise the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mommy was giving an example of one time. When the Lord told her that. Okay. Your son's hand that was, uh, that was eaten by rat and was rotting away, will not be cut off. It took about 10 years for that promise to come to pass because God does not lie. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we we're going to this house that we're moving into, we we're praying about where we're going to move into, and God showed me the picture of the house and the number of the house. And I saw my wife, this is the number. That was the number, and that's the color of the house. We've never seen it before. 
I was praying in this church, in that office. I was not a pastor there. In this office. And one day, Sunday morning, I saw dimes. Dimes. Falling down so much. I said, what's the meaning of this? I've never got $10,000 in my life in America. About a week later, $10,000 cash was wired into my account. Amen. That was probably the dime that was saved. Brethren, as God promised you something, it will not fail you. Amen. God is not a man that should lie. Or a son of man that should repent. If you are not already made him the Lord of your life, that's the first place you start from. Because in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised through Christ Jesus, that eternal life has been made possible. Heaven and earth is real. God's word is real. Because God is not a man that should lie. Let's rise up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise me the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope that word has been a blessing to you. I just want you to pray, Lord, you are not a man that should lie. Every promise that you have, you have made to my life, every promise of your word, let, 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 let them start coming to pass in my life. And if you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus, I want you to know that the God promised the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. And the word of God said, which God that cannot lie, promise. God has promised eternal life through Christ Jesus. That eternal life is available today if you open your heart and you ask Jesus to come into your life and be your personal Lord and Savior. If you will realize that you are a sinner, every man was born a sinner. But the Lord of God said, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God is from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You will receive eternal salvation if you will confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and believe that God is from the dead for your justification and for your sin. That all men have sinned. But if you're thinking you are righteous, you are good enough to go to heaven when well, you are just deceiving yourself. In the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promise before the world began. Guys, I thought we were praying. I want you to pray that God's promises will come to pass in your life. Everything God has promised to you. It may even take 10 years or 20. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. He will not give up on you. His promises will come to pass. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, in a few minutes, I want us to have the, the thanksgiving. We're going to bring the offering. Uh, you, you, you're going to co co coordinating the, right, the offering, right? If, no. So who is leading the praise for that? Yeah, you are the one? Yeah. That's what I was asking. Okay, would you please come up here? And that, I just need five minutes. Please. The offering should be brought. That five minute dance. Everybody thank God for the first Sunday. And then we do the offering. Uh, tight, whatever.